I'm Brenda Christie. I work for the Virginia Department of Forensic Science as a principal forensic science scientist in the field of trace evidence, where I analyze a specific group of materials to find any ignitable liquids that are present in fire debris, as well as paints and polymers, bank dyes, pepper sprays, lamp filaments, um, and a host of other exams as well. There's a number of different things that I have to accomplish. I don't do them all on the same day, but I need to receive evidence from law enforcement agencies, um, catalog that evidence, perform the analyses that are required, which is a lot of just wet chemistry and instrumental analysis. So I would analyze those to see what evidence is present that would need analysis to, for a comparison or just an identification, do whatever extractions that are necessary, run those on the instrumentation that I have in my laboratory, and then uh, examine the results of those to see what the conclusions would be, what my opinion on the likelihood of those conclusions to occur, so I can portray that in court later. Write everything down and then write a report to those findings and mail them. That all doesn't occur on one single day, but that's what needs to be accomplished. They're just regular working hours. I'm not on call. I don't go out to crime scenes. Um, basically, I'm an, uh, forensic science is an applied chemistry in my field. It can also be applied biology if you do DNA, but we don't go to crime scenes, don't interview bad people. We don't really see them until we go to court and we're confronted with them there. So it's very um, just normal day hours. You get to choose which hours you have, but it's just regular working hours where you go home at night. And at least in Virginia, you're not on call for any weekends. I do travel some. I provide training statewide. We have to attend conferences. We have to keep up on certifications. So I travel for all of those things. I don't travel, I only travel within the state of Virginia because I work for the state of Virginia. So I only travel within Virginia to provide testimony, but I train law enforcement throughout Virginia on what to look for, what to collect, how to, um, how to know what it is that we need in order to provide the results that they want. Well, I love that I work mostly independently. Um, there's, of course, there's oversight in what I do, but I'm not micromanaged. It's a very independent job. And what I do with all the different cases, everything is very, can be very different from one day to another as far as what I do, what the evidence actually is. So it's always a challenge in looking at something and, and kind of like identifying an unknown, but lots of different types of exams that occur and just figuring out what it is that's there as well as um, actually assisting law enforcement and families to have some closure in cases where they wouldn't necessarily have that any other way. Um, I love that aspect of it. I also love just when we when we do help people, even though I never really get to meet whoever it is that, that I do help, just knowing that what I do does make a difference in, in just daily life. Sometimes we can't meet the expectations of law enforcement. They'll bring us evidence and there is just nothing there that can tie anything back. So that can be very frustrating to them and frustrating not really frustrating to us, but um, just because you can hear the frustration when they don't have anything to prove what they're trying to prove, but that's just how it works sometimes. We can't make the evidence up. We can only report what we have, and sometimes it just doesn't work out that way, so um, that's just how it is. A lot of people have, it really depends on what aspect of forensic science you want to get into. Some people very much want to go to the crime scenes. And those people, if you go to the crime scenes, you don't really need a background in chemistry. You need a background in criminal justice. You work for the police departments, and um, some people that I work with really consider that more of the collectors. They don't do any analysis. All they do is go to the crime scenes all day, all night, and collect the evidence. We don't do that because um, we're um, scientists. So we, the evidence is all delivered to us. Sometimes I joke and say it's just like Christmas because everything comes wrapped up. It doesn't come in pretty paper, but everything comes in sealed, all wrapped up, so you can't see what's in there. So it, um, I would, I would recommend that somebody actually get a degree in chemistry or a dual major in, in chemistry and forensic science. The chemistry, the usually the classes that are required for chemistry really suit you well for a forensic science type program. You can go on to graduate school and get a more specialized training, but forensic science is just applied science, so there's no specialized training necessarily at an undergraduate level. It's important not to, in my opinion, not to diversify or not to make everything so specific as an undergrad, but to keep your options open and to get a degree in, in something that's a little bit more wide, because you may go into forensic science and hate it because there's not that glamour aspect so the, a degree in chemistry makes you more suited to then go on to any other field, 
as well as to pursue lots of different avenues within forensic science rather than specializing in an undergraduate level. And if you want to do anything chemistry related, whether it be toxicology, trace evidence, or drug chemistry, you absolutely have to have instrumental analysis, you have to have analytical chemistry, um, and you have to just do everything that you need to do to get a degree in chemistry. If you wanted to do DNA analysis, then you really need to take biochemistry, molecular biology, genetics, and statistics. Those are four required courses nationally. You can't get a job without them. Um, that, and it's, it's sort of important to know if you wanted to go into the biology or the chemistry realm so that you can tailor what you're doing to meet those criteria. If you're more interested in like a, a firearms analysis or latent fingerprints or question documents, those aren't highly science-based. It's, it's really more visual, so you need, it's very good to have a science degree, but you also, in a lot of these classes, need to have a good mic microscopy background. That's the one thing I didn't really get as a chemistry major was a lot of microscopy, and there's a lot that you can learn from, substance, some, from something just by looking at it under a microscope. And you can do um, microscopic chemical analysis and uh, identify something under this, the correct conditions. So that's really something that I don't know any undergraduate program that's offering in a chemistry background that would be a benefit. While I was attending Rollins, well, before I even started Rollins, um, my next door neighbor here in Orlando was the director of the Florida Department of, of Law Enforcement Crime Lab here in Orlando. So he helped me with my high school science fair projects that I did on forensic differences between identical twins. I have a twin sister that I lived with then. She attended UCF and I attended Rollins. But um, he introduced me to what forensic science was. And it seemed like a good career um, here. It wasn't really what I loved about forensic science because we did mostly DNA, we did latent fingerprints. And then while I was attending Rollins, I did um, an internship with the Orange County Sheriff's Office here and also with the Federal Bureau of Investigation in Washington, D.C., which is an excellent internship program, both in latent fingerprints, and both helped me to come up with my Rollins thesis, my honors thesis here. I really liked forensic science as far as that went, so I went on to graduate school. At the time, there were only eight graduate programs in forensic science, and Virginia Commonwealth University had one of the best. So I went to VCU for graduate school, and while I was there, I was introduced to some of the more intricate parts of forensic science, one of those being trace evidence, which is more applied chemistry. So that would allow me to utilize my entire chemistry background and degree, which Rollins prepared me for very well. Um, as far as the instrumentation, coming in from Rollins seemed to me a much better step than some of the larger universities because I had such hands-on experience with a lot of the instruments and with analyzing the results that you just can get when you've got such a small class of chemistry majors as opposed to a couple hundred. So I came in very prepared for that. I worked as a, at a pharmaceutical company while I was in graduate school um, doing quality control and instrument maintenance on some of their instrumentation as well. And both of those things suited me very well to, for my career. It takes a lot of patience. You, of course, have to be a good employee like anywhere else. You have to be able to show up and work your hours uh, and not complain, get along with others. Um, I work mostly by myself quite a bit. So it's important to have good working relationships with people. It's also important to be able to go to court and be a good witness. So you have to be able to answer questions on the stand, be very unbiased about it. Uh, you don't have to be the most outgoing person. You just have to be confident in what you're doing. So you have to go through a training program that gives you that confidence and be able to explain what it is you did what the limitations are, that's very important. You can't overstate any of your conclusions in court. Um, but just being able to explain it, being able to understand it at all levels, how everything works, because you never know what somebody's gonna ask you on the stand. They may wanna ask you the most intricate ways that your FTIR system functions. What detectors you have, why did you choose that one? Would another detector have provided you with any additional information that could have exonerated their client? So you really need to be able to explain everything that you have, how it works, and the intricacies of it. So it's not something that I would consider a glamorous job. It is very rewarding at times, um, but there's a lot to do. And there's a lot of pressures as well if you've got multiple cases that you need to get done that are going to court. So it's important to be able to evaluate what needs to be done and set your own priorities.